I always start by evaluating scan quality um, because the suboptimal distension of small bowel or motion artifacts can significantly affect interpretation, especially with diffusion weighted imaging. So I would just give it a quick scroll through the images to look for any gross abnormality or what artifacts are present on the imaging. Well, you can see on this imaging that the small bowel loops are uh, adequately distended for uh, optimum image interpretation. So once I'm satisfied with the image quality, I would begin at the ileocecal junction to orient myself. In most patients, you will find the ileocecal junction in the right iliac fossa. In this case, obviously, it's very easily visible. But sometimes the small bowel is oriented in a way that the ileocecal junction is not that easy to spot. So I normally start with the cecum and go upward. And uh, obviously, this is the ileocecal junction. On CT scan, you can look for the presence of fat at the ileocecal valve, which is an important landmark to identify the ileocecal junction. But on MRI, on D2 weighted imaging, the fat might not be that easily seen because fat is bright and fluid is also bright on D2 weighted imaging. And then I would scroll through the rest of the images to broadly understand the disease pattern before applying a more uh, systematic, structured approach.